Hello friends and once again welcome to bispsolution.com. My name is Amit and we are continuing to learning Groovy script with Oracle planning. So in the previous example I taught you how you can use export data to file method and export data on the fly from your planning application to CSV file. This is the example we did in the last class. Today I'm going to use the same example and add one more level of complexity by applying filter while you're exporting data. So there are many instances where you need to export data on a based on certain filter criteria. So let's quickly recapitulate the last example we did it. So this is my application for the sake of testing. I put some sample data through a smart view and the same data I'm going to export through a Groovy script. This is step one. And on top of that, I'm going to apply a filter criteria on data and based on filter, uh, the data export will take place. Let's take our first example. So this is what we did last time. I created an object for operation.application.get cube name. I'm using enterprise planning application and the financial uh, planning is my cube, okay, OEPFS. So first I create a cube object pointing to my OEPFS cube. And optionally I set the date format Define delimiter, define column header. You see, in my case, I prepare a, uh, my application export data file export exactly the same format the way I prepare a smart view for the sake of simplicity. So, January, February, March is the name of the column. You could have a nesting of column as well. Okay. And then I apply a set row filter criteria. The low row filter criteria based on dimension member name. If you look at carefully, I limited the whole uh, whole export for a specific product. This is a, my sample product or smart board, four inches, scenario forecast, FI 22, 23, load and product revenue. And the file name is also hard coded. In the next example, I create the file name on the fly. Dynamically, we create the file name. Let's validate this and run it and quickly test the output. This is without data filter then i extend the same example by applying a data filter so validation done successfully let's run the data run this rule and this is exactly uh, it will export the data exactly in the same format uh, same data value what you see in my smart view because i kept the point of view exactly same Okay. So data get exported and you can see the data into your inbox and outgo explorer by default system exports data into inbox and outgo explorer. This is an expression export data to file and this is the name of my file. So go to application overview. Application overview. There you can see. Under action inbox and outgo explorer. You can sort by timestamp. And I'm going to sort it by timestamp uh, and this is my data file right it's 2 KB let's download this file and see the data value data export file I ran it multiple time during testing therefore you see there are multiple version 1 2 3 4 okay. so this is my data file so the data which I input into my smart view the same that I exported isn't it you see the same data Okay. This is one simple data export solution. There I filter based on dimension member. However, it is also possible to apply filter on data value. In order to do this, I'm going to modify my rule, modify my set row filter criteria. Okay. Now set row filter criteria, I'm going to pass raw data object. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a raw data object, raw data. Ah, this is going to be under parenthesis raw data and you create an object name called raw it is pointing to uh, row dot get get value and then I define value you can take any criteria let's say I'm going to export data for January month so I'll limit it for January greater than uh, gen value value greater than any value let's say greater than 10,000 okay 10,000 so this expression is going to apply filter on January 
with a value greater than 10,000. When I run this code, I'll get an error message. And I want you to show that error message intentionally. See this, when I validate this, there was an error message of type casting. Because the data by default object uses a string format and I'm applying filter on, on uh, once again, applying filter on my string. Therefore, we get uh, an error message. So let me copy this, my source file and apply this code. So what I did, actually I supposed to enclose in our double quotes and under curly braces. So this is actually my code. Now, when I run this code, I'll get an error message. And uh, let's see the error message first. This is pertaining to typecasting. Right, now look at this error. It says, cannot find the matching method java.lang.string compare integer. So this returns the integer and therefore it is comparing with my matching class string. It means I need to perform a type casting with this. So in order to perform type casting, I'm going to use a type cast expression. So before row, I apply double dot parse, parse double. So this is going to my parse the string into a integer format. Then put this under parenthesis, make sure your parenthesis are balanced. So I just check my parenthesis are balanced. Yes, the parenthesis are balanced and remove the extra space. Now what is going to happen? See this once again, I apply a filter criteria on row. So I create a raw data object called raw. And then since it is a string expression, the class was written the string type, therefore, and the argument is number. They're trying to perform this. I need to perform a type casting. So double dot double pass double, and I pass the argument over here and then put a value. This time, let's validate and validate and execute again. Unlike in previous example, this time data would be filtered only for that value, which is greater than 10,000. So optionally, you can delete the file from your inbox and outbox explorer. So you render a new output. Delete this file and log file both. My log file did not have any error. Therefore, it is empty 0, 0.0 KB. I deleted both the files Then I'm going to render this code. Execute this code. Oh, make sure you save it. Save, validate and execute. Preferably deploy and then execute. Launch. Let's wait for a few seconds. You see the new file appear over here. Continue to refresh. Because probably the high volume of data, therefore it takes some time. A method called by script line for parsing. Okay, let's check first the output. So sales data file got uh, exported. I have runtime error called parse before we check the output. So there's no error file generated is empty. Look at the data file. Download this file to my local file system. And this is your file. See the criteria meets over here. The file number is 11. Let's double check. The file number 11. Yes, this is a file. So the criteria which I apply for 10,000 applies over here, 13,000 of this. Only for January month, isn't it? I should have limited this expression for January month. Now you see that uh, data export took place, the filter apply only for the month of January. I should have limited this only for January month data. Right now we have for January, February, March. So this is your expression and this is your output. See, uh, on one hand I'm applying column for January, February, March, on the other hand I apply filter only for January month. So that could be a uh, one level of confusion. To make it even simpler, you can just limit your data only for January month. Save and validate. Once I'm going to export this data. And this time the filter will apply only for January month. That's it. And then execute it once again. And we look at the output. So this size supposed to be changed. Okay. The execution is still going on. Optionally, you can delete the file and rerun it. Okay, we got a runtime error, but I see 
the data export is continue to happening yes the file got decreased now 2 kb download this file and check the output i can further apply try and catch to deal with this error that i show you in next example okay so i want to make this example fairly simple uh, now let's see right now we have data only for the month of january and this is the criteria this is my output and this is my uh, groovy script i'll deal with this runtime error by applying try catch expression see this the criteria applies everywhere january month data is greater than 10000 isn't it 44000 14000 10000 and so on so this is one more alternate way to export data out of your application using groovy script groovy script for sure is faster than your traditional data export function alternative you could use data management you can export it as simply through a smart view okay ad hoc basis or you can go to application and export data all those options are available to you but my experience is groovy script when you're running through a batch file offline business hours you need a data export groovy script is one of the excellent way to export data out of your planning application so that's it for today that's it for today thank you very much for watching our video should you have question please feel free to reach out to bhsolution.com